For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is revolutionary and writer Barry Gelder, here to unpack his latest novel titled At Fire Hour. In your latest novel, you bring to life the character of Peggy Makatini, the young anti apartheid poet suspected of betraying the ANC. So talk to us more about Peggy, his inner conflict, his art, his writing, and his desire to fight against apartheid. Yeah, Becky uh, got his politics in the 70s. He was a member of Sasso. He was called the Poet Laureate of Sasso. So he grew up politically in a black consciousness environment. He was detained, allegedly for his contacts with the ANC, um, and eventually released and went into exile and joined the ANC. Because he was released without being charged, there were some in the ANC who suspected as to why the apartheid uh, police released him. And that theme kind of runs through the novel, that suspicion and the question of trust and betrayal. But the main theme of the novel is the conflict between his art, his writing, and his desire to fight apartheid. So the novel deals also with ideas about art and politics, art and society, art and revolution, art and struggle. Uh, Becky goes for military training with the ANC in Angola. He goes for further training in, in the then Soviet Union in Moscow. Uh, I can't tell the whole story, otherwise people won't buy the book. <laughs> And as you just mentioned about using the ideas of art, love, freedom, and struggle. So can you tell us about how you worked to combine these disparate threads together? You know, the book was done in, uh, as part of a requirement for a PhD in creative writing. The other part of the requirement was a more academic essay. And in both the novel and the essay, I'm looking at this issue of the role of art and artists in struggle circumstances, in national liberation struggle or whatever, types of political upheaval, um, which is something that's always interested me. I started my political life as a cultural activist, um, singer-songwriter, but don't ask me to sing now, please. Um, and it's just always been of interest to me, the issue of the role of art in society. And it's been a debate across the centuries, actually, by academics, by artists, by writers. So that's what kind of drove um, my conceptualization, both of the novel and the essay. Mm -hmm. And you open your chapters with poetry. So what kind of setting were you trying to create? I should be asking you that question. Um, I wanted to do something which I was told was very difficult by my supervisor for the PhD and include Becky's writings uh, in the book, in between the narrative. Um, in, in the intention was to convey some of his uh, emotions, his feelings, his responses but also over the period of the narrative to show some evolution in his writing. Uh, he, know, he moves a bit later on to more prose, he still writes poetry, but with more prose. And also to, to use the poetry and the prose as part of the narrative, as part of setting the scene. Um, and, you know, if you read the book, you will see that some of the things he puts in the poetry come out of the experiences that he has in the narrative. And Barry, tell us more about Beggy's hardships in exile, even though, as you just said, he was never charged with betraying the struggle. Look, the issue of trust, betrayal, was a real issue for those of us who were in the struggle, whether inside the country or in exile. So I wanted to portray how that could affect people uh, involved in the struggle. I can't tell you again what happens, but, uh, but he is seriously confronted by the ANC, 
because some one of the characters in the book kind of tells on him. But they can never prove, and there are many who don't believe that he could have sold out. So you'll have to buy the book. Your, your viewers will have to buy the book and see what happens. And your work reminds us of how the South African government placed Botswana under increasing pressure to try to force it to stop making anti-apartheid statements and to expel South African refugees. So how did your personal experience of exile play into setting the scene? Well, I was based in Botswana for six years in the ANC underground leadership. I was there during the June 1985 SADF raid on Khabarone in which Tami Mnele, the artist, was killed and others. And yeah, we had a direct experience of, of the Botswana government trying and they politically supported our struggle but they were always under threat from the apartheid regime and there were elements we know in the Botswana special branch who cooperated or collaborated with the apartheid the security police. We had intelligence to that effect. I also know, for example, that they gave the South African police a photograph of me. <laughs> so uh, before the 1985 raid, the, the life in Botswana the cultural life was, was amazing. You know, we had Medu Cultural Ensemble, which was an organization of South African, Botswana, and other artists. Jonas Gwangwa, Hugh Masakela were based there. We used to go and listen to them every weekend uh, at, a, at a small venue outside Khaboroni. There was poetry readings, plays, lots of visual arts being done. It was a very vibrant thing. But after the June 85 raid, it all went away. Everybody went deep underground. Um, so it was very difficult. And lastly, Barry, what are you hoping people take away with them after reading this book? You know, I'd like to think, I suppose all authors would say this, but I'd like to think the book would appeal to many people, different people. Obviously, those who are interested or shared the history would find the book interesting. People who have an interest in this art and society debate would find the book interesting. I think there's also some nice romance in the book, so people interested in, uh, in a rom romantic story, uh, romance in difficult conditions, I think would, would enjoy the story. So I'm hoping it would appeal to too many people um, and that people my motivation for telling that story as I've done in the other books I've produced is because I believe it's important to communicate that history um, you know there's the common saying freedom was not free but I think it's important to tell that story of how we got to where we are today and, and some of the people that helped get us here uh, so I hope that communicates a part of our history to people too. That was Barry Gilda speaking to Krima Media's Polity about Ed Fire Hour.